Craig here again with ForbiddenKnowledge.info. As an alternative healthcare practitioner, I get a little tired sometimes of all these new wonder products that come on the market that purport to be able to cure everything that ails you. Uh, everything We've seen these things, they become fads and they come and go generally, some of them stick around, uh, and they, but if they're not proven to be safe or effective folks, even as an alternative uh, practitioner, uh, I gotta say you gotta take this all with a grain of salt. Um, as examples, some of the fads we've seen come along here in the last 10 years or so, coral calcium, colloidal silver, iodine, and over all that time period also vitamin D. Now, vitamin D, time out, is not even a vitamin, technically, so that's not the scope of this video. Go do some research on that. But anyway, that being said, moving on. Um, Vitamin D is the scope of this program today. We have things that we add to our products, vitamin D2, vitamin D3, uh, that the, the FDA allows us to call vitamins, but they aren't. We already know that because vitamin D is not a vitamin. But more to the point, none of these chemically produced products, these man-made produced products that we put into our, our supplements, are natural at all anyway. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, vitamin C. Let's say, uh, th and there's probably other videos on YouTube on this. Let's say this piece of paper is the entire complex of vitamin C from here to here, okay? And we take something called ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is maybe just this much of that entire vitamin C complex. There's ascorbic acid. You might take another ascorbate or whatever. It's not the whole vitamin C complex. So you might take this vitamin C for a while, get some results a little bit, and then all of a sudden nothing happens and you actually, you're starting to damage yourself because you're only taking this one chemical called ascorbic acid, for instance, which is not vitamin C. <laughs> so it, your body is going to start rejecting that because you're not getting the entire vitamin C complex with all the cofactors. You're only getting a small portion of it. So you're not doing yourself any good by taking these chemicals that are called vitamins. Uh, and let's say, okay, for instance, animals develop their own vitamin C internally, but we humans develop our own vitamin D internally from the sun, right? That's the way we get our vitamin D. But no, there's these, all these doctors and gurus and everything are coming out, and yes, some doctors that are coming out and promoting the benefits of taking these extreme amounts of vitamin D3, which is called colacalciferol. The spelling is down below here, colacalciferol. Um, this is what we're going to be talking about, which is vitamin D3. Now, the other calciferol, which is called agrocalciferol, uh, is vitamin D2, identified by the FDA as vitamin D2. So, agrocalciferol is vitamin D2 derived from mushrooms, and colacalciferol is vitamin D3 derived from sheep's wool, actually. But the one you're going to find uh, mostly in all your products is going to be the colacalciferol, which is, is going to say D3. That's the one you're going to find in more abundance than the, the agrocalciferol. But we're going to be talking about just about colacalciferol today. Now, we had a client once that was actually having big troubles, vomiting, uh, nausea, headaches, every day uh, in the morning when she got up. And couldn't figure out what was wrong. Uh, it, so eventually, the husband uh, said, well... Could it be something you're taking? And so she decided to stop taking everything she was taking, the supplements, and it went away. Well, they do some further investigation to find out what it was that was causing her, what she might have been allergic to or what sensitive to. And it turns out, after various experimentation with different products, that it was a products that had colacalciferol in it, or vitamin D3, as you call it. So maybe she was more susceptible than others. Maybe she was allergic to it. In any case, there is some people that have reactions to it. And there's, if you look, there's a lot of other reactions that can happen too, and some of them deadly. But let's take an example, because I'm getting somewhere here, and I have, I'm taking a little while to do it, but I'm trying to build this up a little bit. We generally know something called warfarin or Coumadin, you might call it, these, that's, a, that's a prescription drug that we can take within the blood, and this is generally recognized these days is as a rat poison. It's a blood thinner. Coumadin warfarin, right? And, okay, now what about colacalciferol? Well, my research has found it is 100% absolutely a rodent killer. Yes, I can prove it to you here right now, actually. Uh, a rodent killer. Kills mice, kills rats. In one feeding. 
It mobilizes calcium from the bones of the mice, and they die in one feeding. Well, let's talk about some products here. I got, I got some sheets printed out here showing some of these products. One is called, and these are made, both made by Bell Laboratories out of Madison, Wisconsin. Quintox Mouse Seed. Quintox Mouse Seed. Seed bait controls house mice. Okay, stick around. This is going to get more interesting. Here's one called uh, Terad 3 Blocks. And there's the title of that one. Terad 3 Blocks. And look at the little neat little thing they did. Terra D3 Blocks. Yes, the ingredient that kills the mice is the D3. Um, and let me explain before I show you close-ups of this. And, and you, you need to look this up yourself. Because I could be lying to you like everybody else lies to you. Um, the, there's, in, in these types of poisons, you go to the, the store and you buy something to kill mice or poison something else. There's always going to be a list of uh, an active ingredient and an inert ingredient. Inert ingredients in this case... Uh, for this Terad 3 blocks, and both of these are, are the same. In fact, they're made by the same company, and one is basically just a replacement for the other. I'm not sure the, the Quintox mouse seed is even still uh, manufactured, but now this is the Terad 3 blocks. Um, and there's other companies that make similar products. Um, so I'm not picking on Bell Laboratories. It's a, a mouse killer. They're trying. They're selling up a legitimate product to kill mice, and that's so. There's nothing, no conspiracy here. Um, the uh, what was I going with this? The Terad 3 block. Oh yeah, the ingredients. Uh, there's two general things. Inert ingredients, active ingredients. The active ingredients, obviously, are the part that actually kills the mouse. The inert ingredients, in this case, are canary seed, millet, uh, things that a mouse would like to eat. Uh, and this, these, both of these particular products, that inert ingredients, is actually at this level of 99.925%. That's the inert ingredients. Now there is an active ingredient, and there's only one active ingredient, and that is something called colocalciferol. And if you've already done the map, you'll know that it's actually 0.075%. Uh -huh. Less than one-tenth of one percent is actually killing a mouse in this product in one feeding. Let me say that, that first, that active ingredient in another, in another way. Because this is how it's written here, which I'm going to show you now. 0.075%. Of course you don't believe me. There it is. You can go on their website. You can go anywhere and look up this product. You can go buy the product and look at it. You can take the product and test it if you want. The one and only active ingredient is cola calciferol. Did I have it off screen there? Cola calciferol. 0.075%. The other ingredients, again, millet, canary seed, the balance of it. So, you can get mad at me if you like. This is absolute proof that cola calciferol, which you call vitamin D3, is a mouse poison. Now, that being said, and I'm doing full disclosure here, do your research, you'll find that, okay, yes, indeed, we find that rodents are more susceptible to uh, cola calciferol poisoning than humans are. There is also a human level. We discussed one that was showing signs of something happening. The problem with this, folks, even if you're taking small amounts uh, that may not injure you now, what does it do over time? Plus the fact, if you go look on your shelves, you probably, hopefully you've already run and looked at you're finding it everywhere. Because there's so many gurus that are talking about vitamin D3, you need more vitamin D3, more vitamin D3. No, maybe you need more vitamin D, and you don't get it from the bottle. You get it from the sun. But no, they're telling you to stay out of the sun. So, look at the labels. You're going to find it everywhere. And sometimes it's, it's not. The, the lady was getting sick. That she, it wasn't astronomical amounts either. It was considered kind of normal levels. Um, but if you start looking at all the products, and everything has it any, anymore. Um, not everything, but most things that have a multitude of listings of ingredients has cola calciferol stuck in there. Because you're demanding it, after all. It, they're going to give you what the customer wants. If you think you need more vitamin D3, they're going to give you more vitamin D3. And maybe it's to your demise. But uh, if you look at all the labels, you're going to find it everywhere. And sometimes it's not just 100% of daily recommended allowances. It's thousands of percent above the recommended daily allowance. So, And you start adding those together, and suddenly 
you've got a severe overload of vitamin D3 potentially. Do some research on that. Uh, again, I'm just, I am trying to demonstrate to you that not everything you hear and see in the alternative part is possibly legitimate. There's a balance. You see, don't throw away everything that the allopathic meta community, community does because you think there's some big conspiracy to kill us and, and so you're going to throw away everything that they've done, all the research that's been done. Yeah, there's a lot of lies and there's a lot of bad things about our allopathic medical system. I don't have our pharmaceutical model. I don't doubt that. But on the other end, the alternative side, so everything that disagrees with the, the allopathic system or the pharmaceutical model is better. Everything the alternative side present is, is suddenly 100% good. No, there's a balance. Some of the stuff in the alternative side is good, some of it's not. So you have to try to research this stuff because we're being so deceived by all this. From the good guys and the bad guys, depending on which side you're on. Okay, <laughs> as an alternative healthcare practitioner, I might, I'm probably the bad guy to all the allopathic community, whereas the doctors are the bad guy to the alternative. There's a balance. Look at both sides. Don't think that they're all, that the side you're on, if you're on the alternative side, don't assume that the allopathic side is lying to you at every step along the way. Look at all the research. Oh, there's lots of research papers. Doctors generally don't even read the, the, the research on the, on the products that they're even recommending. And so I've just shown you that, and, and I don't know if I said it before, this mobilizes calcium from the bones. They fall apart. The mice fall apart in one feeding. That's what it does. Um, having to do with osteoporosis or some other things going on? I don't know. What I just presented to you is proof that cola calciferol kills mice. That's what I've proven to you, okay? You're going to start, I'm going to get so many trolls on this, don't start blasting me because I'm saying don't take vitamin D. I'm telling you take vitamin D from the sun, but you might want to examine what's wrong with this picture when something called cola calciferol is the one and only active ingredient in a, a rat and mouse poison at less than one tenth of one percent. These, all these lo this labels, they have a, a whole long list of keep away from pets and children and danger, toxic, poison, poison. It says right on the labels, folks. So the, at the ingredients I'm seeing here, actually, it looks like something that probably we should be pretty good. Why don't we take this stuff? I may not like the taste of uh, canary seed and millet as being the, uh, the other ingredients, but it's got vitamin D in it. And not a whole lot. Maybe we should be taking that. Sounds like good, but no, there's all kinds of poison warnings on there. Keep away from pets and children. And all the trolls, of course, the trolls are probably already pissed off and down there trolling me right now. All I've shown you is cola calciferol is a poison. You want to argue with me? You want to tell me Dr. So-and-so says this and this book says that and somebody else, maybe they're trying to sell you something. Maybe they're on the lecture circuit. Maybe they're selling you a product. Maybe they're selling DVDs or books. Or maybe they're just shills trying to keep you ignorant people down. I don't know. I've just shown you, because I get called a shill a lot, I've just shown you that this, this, this cola calciferol kills mice and rodents. I don't care if you agree with that or like it or not. It's the absolute proof. You can prove it for yourself. So that's all I've shown in this video. I've proven to you that D3 is a poison to rodents. Okay, take that what you will. I don't take, personally, I do not take vitamin D3. I don't add it to my products. I keep it off. For instance, my products, I, I don't add vitamin C either to my products. My products, I add something called rose hips. Rose hips is a natural substance that has high vitamin C in it, naturally. It has all the cofactors. Your body knows what to do with that. It's a lot higher vitamin C content than any of the citrus, in fact, by many hundreds of percent. Um, but, I, but I don't put vitamin C on my label because vitamin C is recognized as being an ascorbate, a chemical. So be careful of the supplements you're taking because there could be a whole lot more to the story of what you're taking. Please, um, thanks everybody for watching and listening. Craig Gout from ForbiddenKnowledge.info.